And now I'd like to turn it over to our third speaker, Ms. Mario. Hello, I'm Mario Deara from the University of Idaho Extension. Um, and let's talk about how mixing grape and vine prunings um, and dairy manure affect the composting process and the final product. I'd like to acknowledge the funding institution that is the NRCS through an Idaho CIG grant. And I also want to acknowledge the co-authors, collaborators, and especially the producers uh, involved in this research and extension project. The project objectives were to determine what impact uh, mixing the grape vine prunings and dairy manure will have on the composting process and what final products we can obtain. The rationale uh, there was uh, that adding the prunings as a carbon source will retain the nitrogen in the compost instead of losing it as ammonia during the composting process. And that's common for dairy manures with a low carbon to nitrogen ratio. We also wanted to know um, if the screening we will have, after the screening we will have a mulch that can be used as a ground cover for the vineyards or other crops to reduce the wheat pressure. The basic premise was that the project was um, good for both the dairy and the grape producers, um, and they will benefit from mixing their waste products. products. Um, for the grape industry, avoiding the burning of, of the prunings and increasing the carbon content on the dairy uh, manure compost. I also work on demonstrating um, three methods of on-farm composting to offer alternatives, especially for a small size producers. Uh, one of the methods I'm going to show today is the most used in Idaho and elsewhere. Uh, but there are uh, two other methods that they are rare, um, they are rare in Idaho, um, but they are used in other parts of the country. Uh, so the idea was to introduce those other methods to Idaho producers uh, and compare them to the most used method. Um, we prepare recipes during using dairy manure, uh, ground grape by prunings, and sawdust from a horse's table. And I will explain why the sawdust in the next slide. The carbon to nitrogen ratio was adjusted to organic standards, and that is um, at or over 40 to 1, uh, since the vineyard where we were working was uh, certified organic. Uh, and the objective was that the final product will follow the state organic guidelines. We did three replications of each system, plus um, three control replications. Um, of windrows which should dairy manure uh, as it will be composted at the dairy. So we call those are our should dairy manure or no carbon added windrows. We did this control only on the mechanically turned system. So let's see some, of, some pictures of each system. Here we have the mechanically turned windrows we didn't have a compost turner, so we used a skitter to prepare and mix the original recipes and for the first two turnings. After the windrows become more fluffy, we use the Grape Producer 35 horsepower vineyard tractor. The windrows were turned five times. And here we have the passive aerated windrows construction. Uh, we started with the plenum, then we put the compost, the mix on top. Sorry. We start with the plenum here, then the compost mix on top, and we cap it with done compost. Um, we use the same recipe for all windrows with carbon added. Um, both the uh, passive aerated and forced aerated windrows uh, were co covered with done dairy compost. And the fourth area to wind road construction, we use a one horse power blower to blow air to two wind rows connected to the same blower. Uh, as we will see in the results, this blower probably was too powerful for the size of wind rows we ended up uh, during the, the project.
you can see the amount of pruning we have from one season. Oops. Yeah, sorry. Here with all, those are the prunings we have shoes from one season at the vineyard. Um, and we use an uh, horizontal uh, feeding hammer grinder um, to, to, grind, to ground the, the prunings. If I, I will do this again, I will use a top feeding, top type grinder. Uh, with this little grinder, uh, with the horizontal one, it took us a whole day with seven people working on the task. Uh, since the feeding throw was narrow uh, for all the entangled uh, pruning. Um, so that was quite a task that we got ourselves into. <coughs> Excuse me. The ground product looked very good, uh, with different sizes from powder to pieces uh, up to one and a half or two inches long, uh, as you can see here in the picture. One of the surprises we had um, was how low the carbon to nitrogen ratio was uh, for the grape prunings. Uh, it is around 80 to 1, uh, which is put them at the level of a straw. Uh, of course, uh, that's only for the annual pruning. If you add the stocks from pulling older grape plants, uh, the value might increase. Uh, but don't expect high carbon content on the annual prunings alone. Our nitrogen source was manure from an 800 counts open lot dairy. Uh, manure had been a stockpile for the season, so it, it wasn't very old. You can also tell by the carbon to nitrogen ratio that was 12 to 1. We developed a recipe with the materials we have. Um, to adjust the carbon to nitrogen ratio to organic standard, again, that's 40 to 1 um, and on the mix. Um, they, they require 40 to 1 when you start the composting mix. Um, since we have such a low carbon to nitrogen ratio on the grape pruning, we have saddled from a local horse stable uh, to increase that carbon to nitrogen ratio. Uh, so we can extend or have enough ground pruning for all replications. Um, you can use the prunings as your only carbon source, uh, but it will take about 40 to 50 percent of the mixed volume and the mixture volume of the windrows to get to the carbon to nitrogen ratio desired for an organic composting, for example. Um, in fact, we did one windrow that was used to check it out, um, and it composted very good. The results looked similar as the mixed recipe. Uh, but we didn't have replication, so the results are only anecdotic. Well, this busy graph shows the temperatures uh, of all the compost systems and windrows together. And the farmer took uh, the temperatures using a compost thermometer, uh, fairly low tech. Mm. The, line, the line in pink shows the temperature that you need to comply with the process to further reduce pathogens and to assure the pathogen destruction. The yellow lines um, show the time is needed at that temperature on systems that they are not turned. You can notice that there is a group at the bottom on red and, and blue uh, that never got even closer to the PFRP. These were the forced aerated system, and most probably the cause was that the lack of moisture. And those forced aerated windrows were the first one we built, and we had some problems with the water supplies, uh, so those windrows started quite dry. And on top of that, the blower connected was too big uh, for the size of windrows we built. Um, I have done other trials using um, forced aerated system, and I have I, I've been able have been able to reach. PFRP without any problem. The passive aerated windrows uh, worked very well. They're reaching PFRP, and actually they gave us an excellent quality compost. Was the best compost on the on the group. On the mechanically turned system, um, those that have carbon added, this one in red and yellow. They reach PFRP, 
The control window that had only dairy manure didn't reach PFRP, um, in part because our time between turnings uh, was a little excessive. Um, usually in dairy compost in southern Idaho, you will reach the needed temperature at least in the first two or three turns. Uh, but it's, it is also common to not reach or sustain those temperatures uh, in successive turns after the third or fourth turns because of the lack of carbon. So the composting microorganisms kind of run out of juice, uh, so other microorganisms, or microorganisms take the lead and start converting the nitrogen to ammonia. The final uh, compost uh, looked very good and by our compost standards in the area. Uh, you can visually tell the difference uh, between the carbon added and the shoot dairy manure compost, um, and also the shoot dairy manure compost was still a very good agricultural grade compost. Uh, the one with carbon added can also be appealing to other users besides the, the extensive crop agriculture, other users like orchards, landscapers, or gardeners in this case. Uh, we did separate the mulch uh, that was usable on the screen refuse. Um, so when you reach PFRP, uh, this mulch can be used even on, on similar plant species. That is, uh, you can, it can be put back at the vineyard to reduce the weeds and keep moisture in the soil. Some other results we observed. Um, I suspected the carbon to nitrogen ratio um, was much higher at the beginning for the carbon added um, systems compared to the shoes manure system um, or windrows. A surprise was the final compost carbon to nitrogen ratio, the line in red, uh, was similar for all systems and all, all windrows. And no difference between the carbon added and the shoes dairy manure uh, compost. A similar trend was observed with the total nitrogen. Um, as expected, the shoes dairy manure initial mix contained more uh, total nitrogen than uh, the mix that have prunings or have carbon added. That's in part because of a dilution effect, since the amount of manure added per unit of volume was less. The rest was pruning and sawdust. The surprise came again at the final product, the final total uh, nitrogen of all compost systems was similar with no difference on the red between the carbon and not carbon added. Uh, but look at the difference between the initial and final total nitrogen on each system, between those three on the left and the one that is used dairy manure, the difference between the initial and the final total nitrogen. For the carbon added windrows on the left, the difference is not significant, and it was just 1.5 uh, pounds per ton. And the shoes manure windrows, that difference was almost 11 uh, pounds per ton. So the total, um, total ni uh, nitrogen loss reduction between the shoes dairy manure and the carbon added system was uh, 8.5 pounds per ton, or about 85% reduction. We didn't measure ammonia emissions, but our deductions is that most of that total nitrogen loss reduction is due to a significant reduction in ammonia emissions. Uh, so far this is, in this study, when we added carbon to the compost initial mix, uh, it doesn't result in an increase in nitrogen on the final product, as we were expecting, uh, but rather in a much more efficient composting process where the microorganisms can effectively use the nitrogen present, reducing ammonia emissions and keeping most of the available nitrogen uh, on the final product. Thoughts were lower again at the initial mix um, to, due to the dilution effect, but in this case the dilution effect was um, carried out on the final product. Of course, that salts and other nutrients like, like phosphorus and potassium 
uh, will concentrate on most composting processes because of the general volume reduction, reduction you have during composting. But the final salt and other nutrients, again, potassium and phosphorus, the concentrations were significantly lower on the systems with carbon added compared to the shoes dairy manure um, windrows. The difference can allow a producer to apply more compost per acre before hitting the limiting nutrient concentration. In Idaho, for example, the limiting nutrient concentration, uh, the limiting nutrient, sorry, uh, is phosphorus. We did a greenhouse bioassay to check for the presence of persistent herbicides like picloram. Uh, we didn't find any herbicides, uh, but as you can see, uh, the greenhouse results were very interesting. And we don't know yet why, uh, but the compost with the grape prunings added made the peas used on the on the SI greenhouse SI. Uh, germinate around eight uh, days or more earlier than the other ones that should have the dairy compost or the, even the control, which is the potting soil. Um, and even, well, during some days later, they translate that early germination or more vigor. Uh, I will try to replicate this trial again this summer uh, to, to see what are the if we can discover any other factor on why this is happening. So, as a conclusion, uh, it is easier f to reach the PFRP when carbon is added to dairy manure composting. Um, on systems that don't require turning, the initial moisture management is fundamental to successful composting. If not, it, it happens like it happens with us. Um, if you start dry, uh, you won't reach PFRP, and your compost won't be complete. Um, Grape by pruning are not are on the low, sorry, on the, on the lower carbon to nitrogen ratio, uh, but there's still a good fit stock for composting and for increasing the carbon content when they are mixed with uh, manures. We didn't have a nitrogen supercharged compost as we were expecting when adding the prunings, uh, but adding the carbon to dairy manures to increase the, the initial carbon to nitrogen ratio significantly improved the efficiency of the composting process and reduce uh, ammonia emissions. More research is needed to determine if other carbon sources like harder wood uh, will act differently um, and to determine what, what changes in the microbial activity are observed during the composting process uh, and in the final product when that carbon is added. Adding carbon sources with pieces of different sizes up to about two inches long has the benefits of creating mulch as a useful secondary product. Um, and again, that, that comes naturally with, in places where um, carbon sources are common because you, you have a lot of rain. <laughs> um, it, it doesn't sound so strange. In, in desert places like southern Idaho, uh, where clima is quite dry, um, it, it sounds like something novel to add carbon to um, to the compost, to the dairy mix. So when you mix dairy manure with grape pruning, definitely it has a beneficial impact for both industries. Uh, it can achieve a significant reduction in the environmental footprint, especially related to air quality and resource recovery. So far, our greenhouse trial left us with many questions. More research is needed to see the impact, especially in the long term, uh, of using compost from carbon added mixes uh, as compared with just dairy manures in soils and also in crops. And with that, thank you for your time. And here's my contact information. And I think we can go ahead with questions for any of us.